Katya and her friends are heading to the top of a mountain to spend New Year's Eve. She records a video of the group as they joke and also share their excitement about how they will spend New Year's Eve. While everyone seems to joke around, her friend Kirill is too serious as he just wants them to make it to the top before it's too late. They start walking to the top and soon stop to take pictures when they see a nice view. As they're taking the pictures, Katya receives a phone call from her friend Masha. Since Katya and Masha had made plans before and now she can't make it, Katya explains herself to her friend, saying she eventually decided to go out to the top of the mountain with Kirill. Masha is surprised to hear this because she knows Katya and Kirill are no longer dating. She also goes further to ask if Katya has also decided to keep the baby she's carrying. But Katya says it has nothing to do with coming for the New Year's Eve celebration with Kirill. She says she's still planning to terminate the pregnancy as she already has a doctor's appointment for next year. Masha asks if Kirill is aware that he's the father, but Katya says he doesn't know anything and she prefers it that way. Shortly after, Katya ends the call, telling Masha that she needs to go. And as she turns around, Kirill appears to be behind her, though it doesn't seem like he heard everything they'd been talking about. The friends continue walking again, and when they get closer to the place where they'll board a cable car, Katya asks if they'll still be allowed to use it because of how late it is. However, Kirill says he spent up to a month to set up everything, so there's no problem. When they get to the cable station, the caretaker refuses to let them in, saying it is already very late and he needs to go home to celebrate the new year with his family. The caretaker strongly refuses despite Kirill's attempts to beg him. When their friend Dennis sees that Kirill is unable to convince the man, he takes over the negotiations and offers the man some money just to let them use the cable car that night. Seeing how desperate they are, the man takes advantage of that and asks for more money. Dennis is initially reluctant to pay the money, but when he sees the others already looking bothered about canceling their plans, he eventually pays the man. With that, they're taken to the cable car and given some instructions, as well as the key to the car's door. While the caretaker goes into the engine room to start operating the cable car's controls, Kirill suddenly mentions that he can't find his bag. He says it might have dropped from his load as they were climbing the mountain and he needs to find it. The others ask him to forget it since the cable car is about to start working, but Kirill says he can't go without it. He then tells Katya to come out of the cable car and come with him as he doesn't want her to go without him, but she tells him she's not leaving. Angry at this, Kirill leaves them at the cable car and walks back down, even though he had been the one who planned the trip. The caretaker starts up the cable car and the others continue with the ride. Inside, Dennis and their friend Vika advise Katya to try to avoid arguing too much with Kirill. However, their friend Roman hopes to take advantage of their fight to try to get closer to Katya. He tells her that he can always be there for her and that he also has a lot of money from his big business, which he can use to take care of her. Katya is not interested in Roman's advances and she even tells him to take things slow when he mentions that he can be with her for both New Year's Eve and after the New Year as well. All of a sudden, the cable car stops and the lights go off. Worried about what this could mean, Vika starts panicking. But Dennis tells her and the others that he's sure the caretaker will fix it because they usually have a backup generator. Roman doesn't seem bothered about this as he opens the door to pee from the top. The others caution him about it, but he says he can't hold it any longer. Scared that he might misplace the key or let it fall down from the cable car, Katya collects it from Roman. After he's through, Roman still doesn't close the door immediately as he keeps talking. Coincidentally, the caretaker made his way down to the engine room to put on the backup generator. As he turns it back on, the cable car starts working immediately and Roman almost falls off, but Dennis is quick to save him. Roman and Dennis have a quick laugh about how that could have ended. And shortly after, Roman finds Kirill's bag under the Christmas tree in the cable car. Eager to see what's inside, Roman starts opening it up, even though Vika says it's wrong. After opening it, Roman sees an expensive bottle of alcohol inside the bag, and he jokes about it, saying it's probably worth enough to see Kirill run back to look for it. While Roman admires the bottle, Dennis calls Kirill to tell him that they have already found his bag. Kirill, however, becomes unbothered and tells Dennis to inform Katya to throw it away. Katya looks hurt to hear him say that as the call is on speaker, but Kirill doesn't seem to care as he then walks further away from the mountain. As he checks the bag even further, Roman also finds a kite and wonders what Kirill must have been planning. Tired of seeing Roman joke about the content of the bag, Katya takes it from him so she can pack everything back. As she's doing this, 
A ring case falls, and she sees a beautiful ring when she opens it. Just as the others are shocked to see this, Dennis is forced to ask if she at least thinks it's nice. Roman, who still hopes he can win Katya over, doesn't look happy about this as he says it's a good thing that Kirill eventually didn't join them in the cable car. Katya doesn't respond to this and she goes on to call Kirill, who sees the call but decides not to answer it. Meanwhile, the caretaker comes back into the engine room to check and also oil the engine. As he's doing this, his key, which is attached to a key holder around his neck, starts dangling close to the machine. Shortly after, the key gets stuck, and as the machine continues working, the caretaker starts to get choked by the key holder. In an attempt to stop it from working, he gets hold of a metal pipe and tries to stop the machine from moving anymore, but it happens to be too late as the machine stops with him hanging from the top. As the machine stops, the cable car stops moving again. Since they think it's the same problem as before, the four friends are less worried, and shortly after they start celebrating New Year after it passes midnight. Katya makes a video she plans to upload on her channel, and Vika also takes pictures. As everyone seems to be enjoying themselves, Katya can't help but think of Kirill, who also has a rethink of how he sounded harsh to Katya. However, he finally decides to go to a bar to celebrate his new year. After celebrating long into the night, the group of friends in the cable car sleep afterward. In the morning, Katya wakes up and sees someone trying to break in through the glass. It turns out to be a nightmare, but when she wakes up, she's still terrified. Not long after, Vika and Katya notice that Dennis is no longer inside the cable car. As they look worried and scared about what could have happened to him, Dennis shows up through an opening at the top. Vika and Katya are relieved to see Dennis, who tells them he only went to check if there's a way to get down. Roman starts sounding really pessimistic about their chances of getting rescued, as he believes there's a possibility they've been forgotten up there. Dennis tells him to stop whining and start thinking of solutions. Soon after, Roman joins Dennis at the top of the cable car, and while Roman thinks it's too far to get to the bottom, Dennis believes they can attempt it. Katya immediately tells Vika to stop Dennis from trying anything dangerous, and after she does that, Dennis says he's only thinking of solutions. Katya then tells the others that the old caretaker probably got drunk and passed out, so they might have to wait longer to get help, as it's their best chance of surviving instead of trying something dangerous. Vika tries her own efforts by lighting one of the three flares they have and shouting for help. Roman doesn't find her efforts useful, and he immediately lets her know. Meanwhile, two new caretakers arrive to start their shift. They complain about having to work on holidays while others are enjoying at their homes. When they enter the control room, they see that the man from the last shift didn't sign out. They don't see it as a big deal, as they think he probably got drunk and forgot to sign out. Soon after, they notice that the cable car is stuck, and one of them calls the repair team, who says they can't make it down there because of the new year. They, however, ask the caretakers to go and have a look to see what's wrong, but the women decide against it saying there's no way they'll do that. Back in the cable car, the four friends decide to start rationing their food and also stop using the flare. As he continues looking for options to get them out of the cable car and back to the cable station, Dennis mentions that if they can find a harness and a rope, they'll be able to climb back down. Luckily, he's able to find a harness, and since they only need a rope to continue their attempts to leave the cable car, Dennis asks the others to check around for a rope. Katya finds a rope, but chooses not to tell the others. She believes it's a very risky plan that may get them killed. She also tells them that if the caretaker is not doing anything to rescue them, she's sure Kirill is doing something. Roman again doesn't like the sound of Kirill's name, and he even points out that Kirill might not even remember them, as he's probably enjoying the new year with a new girl. Meanwhile, Kirill is back in his room after having too much to drink from his New Year celebration at the bar. His mom calls him to ask about his marriage proposal to Katya and when they'll be getting married. However, Kirill says there's no wedding just before he ends the call and says he'll call her back. Elsewhere, the new caretakers direct people to a new cable station, saying their own place is under renovation and will be back by the 10th of January when the stuck cable car is fixed. In the cable car, the four friends have lost cell service, and after checking around to see if there's a panic button or something that can help them, they eventually light a fire and sit around it to get warm. Soon after, Roman brings up the idea of hanging the harness on the cable to go down. Dennis says it's a bad idea, as it will only leave him stuck. Seeing as the harness is of no use, Vika takes it from Roman and decides to keep it away from the boys. 
quite interestingly. She finds the rope Katya failed to hide from them, and when they realize she did it intentionally, Roman blames Katya for trying to sabotage their efforts. Shortly after, Dennis is able to get everything ready for them to go down, but choosing a volunteer becomes a problem. Roman nominates everyone but himself, saying he's quite heavy and they need someone who is light. Vika suddenly gets tired of hearing Roman make excuses for why he can't go down, especially since he has done nothing to help their situation. This leads to a fight between both of them and ends with Vika slapping Roman. Roman doesn't like it, but before he can retaliate, Dennis interferes and both men start fighting. To stop them, Katya threatens to throw down the rope and that does the job. Dennis then volunteers to do it, and after they check to see that the rope is tied well to an iron rod inside the cable car, Dennis uses it to start going down. As he gets close to the ground, he tries to lessen his weight by throwing down his bag, but as it drops, it breaks the ground underneath him, and Dennis has to shout to the others to pull him back up. Dennis is quite heavy to pull, and in the process of doing so, Roman loses his grip after the rod attached to the rope breaks, and he also starts dangling from the rope. To save himself and make it easier for the girls to pull, Roman brings out a knife from his pocket and cuts Dennis off the rope. Dennis falls off, and Roman is able to make his way back up to meet the girls, who are shocked by what Roman did. Vika starts calling him a murderer as she hits him. She also gets the knife off him and threatens him with it. Katya convinces her to drop it and tells her that Roman did what he had to, or they would all have fallen. Vika still doesn't agree, but as she talks, she suddenly starts to get dizzy, and Katya notices that Vika has lost a lot of blood from bleeding due to an injury she sustained after the rod broke, and they almost fell. While trying to stop the bleeding, Katya and Roman hear a helicopter flying close to them. Roman goes to the top to shout for help, but it doesn't yield anything, so he asks Katya to bring the flares. She hesitates for a while as she doesn't want to leave Vika alone, but soon goes up and lights one of the flares. This also doesn't work and Roman starts to blame Katya. Roman pushes her, and as she falls, Katya lands on the door of the opening at the top, which then locks it. Roman returns to his senses and tries to open it, but his efforts are not enough. With this, he sees the key to the cable car's door around Katya's neck and tells her that she needs to climb down to open the door. Since it's a dangerous plan, Katya doesn't want to do it. Again, Roman starts shouting at her and tries to attack her, but she uses the last flare to scare him off. Roman still proceeds to attack her when the light from the flare almost goes off. She pushes him, and he gets injured with the fire from the flare also burning his jacket as well. Seeing as he'll continue to try to attack her, Katya decides to head for the door. It's not an easy task for her, as Roman also attempts to hit her with an iron rod as she's dangling next to the door. She successfully opens the door and goes in, only to see Vika already dead. Now desperate to go in so that he can kill her, Roman aggressively starts trying to open the top lid, and as he tries it repeatedly, one of the screws of the cable car gets loose. With this, Roman gets thrown off the top, with Katya also falling badly inside the car. Meanwhile, Kirill leaves the hotel and heads to the airport. On his way, he can't stop thinking about Katya, and immediately after he arrives at the airport, he calls the hotel to ask for his friends. Kirill is told that none of them came back to the hotel, and he figures out that something must have happened to them. He boards a taxi again and heads back to the cable station to look for them. Back in the cable car, Katya wakes up with her hand stuck to the floor due to the freezing cold. She manages to get it off the floor and then proceeds to make the cable car warm by lighting a fire and blocking the open parts of the car. However, this doesn't go on for long as a detached metal from the cable car repeatedly hits one of the windows to then break it, allowing cold to get in again. At this point, Katya records a video telling Kirill how much she loves him. She also shows herself wearing the ring in his bag and tells him that she has accepted even though he's yet to propose. Before she ends the video, she also tells him about the pregnancy. Shortly after, Katya notices that the cable car may soon get loose from the cable, and as such, she packs the kite and Christmas lights into a bag. Before she can go any further, another screw gets loose, and the cable car dangles, with Katya falling against one of the windows. The glass window starts to crack, and as Katya sees Vika's body rolling towards the glass, she moves quite fast away from the window, and Vika's body breaks the glass and falls off. Elsewhere, Kirill has to get out of the taxi when there's traffic, 
He runs to the cable station and hears the caretaker talking about the dead old man who had started the cable car for his friends. He also finds out that the cable car has now fallen and asks the woman if she saw anyone there. The woman lies that she personally checked the cable car when she started her shift and there was no one there. With this, Kirill heads out, looking really sad as he can't believe his friends are gone. Katya manages to avoid falling down with the cable car after she hangs on to the iron connecting it to the cable. After a while, she connects the Christmas lights to the kite and then starts controlling it. Kirill suddenly sees it from where he is and goes into the engine room to try to power it up so that his friends can still find their way back to the station. He sees the metal rod that lets the engine get stuck and tries his best to remove it. His best is, however, not enough and he has to get help from a man driving a crane to help him out. This works out just fine and he's able to remove the metal rod after which the engine starts running well again. With this, Katya is rescued, and as Kirill sees her, he runs to meet her while she's being carried away on a stretcher. Katya happens to still be alive, but she doesn't say anything as she looks into the sky before an oxygen mask is placed over her nose so that she can breathe well. Thanks for tuning in. A thumbs up would be amazing because I've got some bills to pay. Back in my bag and I gotta brag, I do this shit for real When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel